Once upon a time, two adventurous souls embarked on what would become a hunt of a lifetime. Thirteen hours to Auckland, New Zealand, a little bit of a layover, and it was morning by then. We missed Tuesday altogether. We left Monday morning, Monday at noon, and we, we missed Tuesday altogether. And we got to Auckland and then a short hop to Wananui, a little bitty airport, and uh, some great scenery in there. Nice mountains and, and some ponds, rivers, lakes, whatever. And uh, nice landing. That, that was a nice plane ride, I thought. We met Tim, met us right inside the door. In just a few minutes, we had our luggage and then we had a short drive to the ranch. The Maury people, invited us to come and hunt their sacred ground. We were honored to, to be asked. Nobody hunts with a bow, but they wanted us to shoot some peacock. But I did manage to get one, and it's beautiful. We, we are very strong and stooped in, um, in our own language and culture and in our beliefs and our values. For all of us, even today, we're still in two worlds. You know, we're very, very strong in who we are. Is Māori as a culture. Everything's vertical and the scenery is amazing. Uh, here we are up on the mountain, first day, and, and Tim's telling us how much property he owns there and He's got one square mile. But it's huge. And Tim said, that looks like a good deer for Chris. And I said, absolutely. And I agree. You drew back, and about the time you let go, he made a quick step. I thought it was a bad shot. Good. It sounded better than it than you think, because of that artery. And yes, where'd he go? 20 yards. Yeah. 25 with the motion and a beautiful fallow there. First day. I thought this was, was oh, this is awesome. I feel 100% better. I thought it was a very poor shot, which it could have been better, but we've got him. And he didn't go very far either. No, no, I'd say about 20 yards, 25 yards. But then trying to drag it straight vertically up. I was that. glad that brush didn't let go. I was glad to be the cameraman there. Part of it. Damn. Every night a, a different grand meal for dinner. Uh, we had got to eat our fallow deer. We got to have some of that. Uh, your red stag. Stag. Uh, the buffalo. We what had, did we have of the buffalo? It was. We had the the loin and the heart that was with dressing. dressing yes. it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And the tongue. Which was interesting. For a young lady, she prepared excellent meals. Kept us well fed. Yeah, and gee, many of the breakfast. Huge, <laughs> huge breakfast. I mean, you're supposed to go out and hunt a little bit after you have breakfast, but all we wanted to do is go back and take a nap. This nice fallow deer made a habit of rubbing his antlers every morning by the cabin. We found the buffalo late in the day and decided to wait till morning and try it again.
the stock. I made a long stock around and ended up being out in the middle of nowhere, out, right out in the open. But you didn't know how mean he was, did you? No, I didn't. Tim failed to tell me how mean this thing was. He kept saying, Denny, closer, closer, <laughs> while he was going backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and after I was on the ground, he started telling me these horror stories, and, and there I was out in the middle of nowhere with this thing. and but made a decent shot on him and at uh, 50 yards and well it was, it was tough to get close to him be, on the stock because he had his two little generals watching yeah yeah and they weren't were, little either <laughs> those little guys were probably 1500 pounds or so and they looked like babies but yeah they were watching him pretty close and uh, I was lucky enough to make a good shot. That's a, that's a money shot, Denny. Tim and Karin Rumble running an outfit here. They've got great stags and uh, really nice fallow deer. And a few months ago, Tim told me that he had my name on this buffalo. And I want to tell you that this is the toughest animal that I've ever put an arrow into. Looking for a good hunt in great surroundings. Check out Watotra Valley Estates. One of the prettiest places on earth and some of the greatest people you'll ever want to meet. Stick with us, we'll be back, hopefully with Chris's red stag and maybe I'll get something else, who knows. These on this particular day, these stags decided to go to the wallow up at the front of the property. The only wide open place on this property. Only one. And you made a terrific stock up over the hill. You had to make a mad dash vertical. It was a tough climb to get above them. And long. And long, yes. But you got up there, you, you got into position. And I got to have a ringside seat. I was down in the valley and I got to see everything. you celebrating but the stags were coming my way and they didn't look like any of them had blood. I had no for quite a long time. Yes you did. It was pouring away shot and to me it looked like a good shot. It was an excellent shot and perfect. Got up in there and got the vitals and he really let me go 300 yards, 250 yards yeah. maybe. Okay. Guess what I found? What did you find? Blood. Come on this side of those trees. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Sure, because there's nothing, no blood on the other side. Yeah, so he was he was quartering away, quartering away. So the shot was back, but it would have gone anyway. He came 
Did you see him now in the stand? I, I, I got video until he moved behind the bush. Then when he moved behind the bush, he stood there with his tongue out. Yeah, and he was... Had to be lungs. Stumbling a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> then he went up the hill and I thought, Ah, oh, man! <laughs> so I hurried around, got over here, and I saw his head go down. <laughs> awesome. And when he fell down, it would have flipped this way. <laughs> Starting to get his... Look how thick! What do you have, Chris? Nine. Can you count? Yeah, yeah. Keep them down. Yeah. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Sixteen. That made it a little bit more challenge. Yeah. I had to watch my shadow. He did a good stalk, man. We, we took everything into consideration up there. Wind, and then we saw the shadows. With the sun coming across. I said to him, be careful with the shadow. If they see that shadow moving, they're gone. Yep. You did a perfect job. Okay. Oh, Alright, well done. Well done. <laughs> Beautiful animal. You got to be the first person to shoot a stag in Watota Valley, gun or bow, and you did it with a bow. That's awesome. One morning we went out and I had tried to, to stalk this particular fallow four times. And the wind, uh, the uh, sun, always something, always something. He would sense I was there and leave. And then you try to, you try to stalk these things. Well, they hear you, they see you, they smell you, they're, they're wild animals. And, this particular morning, we knew where this one was bedded. He hung around that area, so we made a stock over the back of the hill and another quick, steep ascent and got up there and I made a decent stock on him. I got above him, but he took off again. Yeah. This time, I had the perfect view from down below. But he took off and, and uh, as soon as I saw him go and I drew back, I, I was gonna shoot and I, I depended on Tim to stop him, and he did it perfect. The thing stopped, pouring away. I got the shot off and was lucky enough to hit him perfectly. Uh, and it, it, it was a good shot. Yeah, I, what a great feeling. That's a money shot, Denny. That's a money shot, mate. I've seen him kick up in the air oh and my gosh, yes. bounce over that hill. And you were down there. You knew he was down, but yeah, we didn't yeah, know yeah, that. Yeah. So we come over, and I see him down there in the bottom, and, and that was a good feeling. And was, he's a very nice fallow deer. Oh, man. He's beautiful. What a nice animal. Can you believe it? Look at that beautiful ram. We made a stop this morning. Back up over the hill. Had to come in from the bottom and go over the top. And he was laying down there, and I didn't see him until he jumped up. Tim made a little grunt, and he stopped, and I about 32 yards. And, uh, boy, he's a pretty animal. Great to be hunting here in New Zealand. That bush down there, and then draw. I'm um, going draw back and then step out of the bush and then shoot him. Okay then. I met this young man three years ago, four years ago I guess, in Africa. He got to go shoot this cull goat, which is a nice one. But he knew how he, how he was going to stock it and he made a perfect shot on it.
<laughs> be very close, I'd say it has come right in there. Because Good job. Congratulations, Lee. Okay. I shot and then he walked to there and then he laid down and then I shot him again and he ran to here and then dropped. At the Marai grounds, we got to, they invited us to go hunting and, and we, I ended up getting a peacock there. One morning we went, we got turkeys. And we shot the heck out of turkeys. We got to go shoot possums. Well, for like of me, I thought, why do we want to shoot possums? And they pluck them, $5 per possum on the fur. And they use them for clothing and, and hats and gloves and stuff. Even bed spreads, I see. Really? Mount Taranaki seemed to be beckoning us back. It was the only thing we saw above the clouds when we got there, and, and it seemed to be calling to me. I uh, calling to me also. I think we're going to have to go back again. If you're I, going, I'm going, so I'm sorry. Even if I have to hide your suitcase, I'm going. Okay, then. Right, it's a date. We're going. <laughs> Thank you.